So that's exactly what you're going to do. When we sing it, you lift your hands and you spin around. And if you're at home watching online, you can join in the fun too. Get off your seats, get off your seats, get off your couches, you do the same thing. If you're joining us online, we thank you that you're online with us. One announcement that I have for today, there's a church session today at 1.30. So if you didn't sign up, I think there's still time to sign up or contact the church office if you want to be a part of that. But right now, let's just continue worshiping the Lord.
storm. Oh no, you never let go. Every high and every low. Oh.
may be seated. Well, good morning, church family. I hope you guys had an amazing week, you know, this week. Uh, you know, I shared last week that we were beginning a, you know, a, a series called Overflowing Joy. You know, and that series, it would take us through the, the book, you know, Paul's letter to the church at, at Philippi. And so we're going to pick up where we, we left off last week. But before we dive in... Let me uh, start by just throwing out a, a question, you know, and it's a question, you know, that maybe you can kind of self-reflect, think about, but the question is this, how, how does one find joy? You know, think about that, you know, because we, we really, we all want to be happy, we want to, you know, I believe that we all desire to, to enjoy life. So how then do we, do we find this joy? You know, let me first respond to that you know, by, by saying that joy, you know, joy is, is not the same as, as happiness. Now I know that I said that you know, we all want to be happy and I think that there's much truth to that. But I also want us to understand that we can be unhappy about many things about the situation that we may find ourselves in or, 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 you know, whatever may have come that day, but joy can still be there because joy comes from the knowledge, I believe, of God's love for us. Henry Nouwen, uh, you know, academic, you know, professor at Yale, scholar, Catholic priest, he, you know, he describes the pursuit of joy like this. He says, joy doesn't simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. It is a choice based on the knowledge that we belong to God and have found in God our refuge and our safety and that nothing, not even death, can take God away from us. You know, I heard it another way described by this individual as simply this. Joy is the emotional result of right spiritual choices. You know, so understanding this, I, I'd like kind of for us to explore some of these right spiritual choices this morning that we ought to be making each day. And to do so, you know, all we need to do is look at the next three verses, I believe, in, in Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. So, you know, if you have your Bibles, turn with me. We're going to be, we're still in the first chapter in the book of Philippians. And we are going to be picking up where we left off last week. So we're going to start here at verse 9 and, and kind of read down to verse 11. Let me read that for us. It says this. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. You know, through these verses, I want to try and pull out these three spiritual, these right spiritual choices that, that Paul encourages us, you know, to make. And, and, and the first is this, live a lifestyle of love. Now, what I mean by this is that we, we need to allow loving others to be, you know, this habitual practice in our lives. You know, let's take another look again one more time at verse 9, and I'll just read that quickly for us. It says, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. You know, here Paul is sharing what I believe is somewhat, um, 
you know, of a given for Christ followers and that, you know, having, and, and that's to have this deep loving concern for others. Now, I realize that it's not best practice to assume things, but if anything ought to be a given, perhaps this ought to be one of those right up there at the top of the list. You know, 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 explains this quite clearly when the Apostle John says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. You know, so basically, you know, live a lifestyle of love. The whole reason why I refer to this as, as a lifestyle is, you know, of love is that, you know, because this wasn't meant to be a, a one-shot deal. You know, it's not this one and done, you know, it, it's not just, you know, let's just be, if we be nice today, if we show up for church on Sunday, you know, it should cover us for the week or, or for the month. It's, this is not a, you know, for lack of better words, a vaccination, you know, for us to, to stop loving. No, it, you know, this lifestyle is an ongoing, constantly growing, never-ending approach to how we ought to be living. And the reason is this, because it's, it's influenced here, you know, and I want to hear this, it's influenced by whom we live for rather than what we live for. And I want to to hear that, you know, this lifestyle is influenced by the one we choose to live for, Jesus Christ, rather than what we live for. And I share this because it's essential, you know, this lifestyle is essential for those who desire to walk with Jesus daily. That's why I think it's, it's healthy to ask ourselves the question, you know, when the world sees us, when they see you, when they see me, you know, what is it that they see? And, and, and I ask myself questions like this all the time because if I'm quite honest, there are times where I may not really like the answers that I get. You know, people see me. What do they see? You know, do they see, when they look at us, do they see individuals, you know, trying to live out, you know, this unconditional love of Jesus through the lives that we live? Or do they see individuals who love themselves and only those like them. You know, my hope is that it's the first rather than the latter. But to do that, we need to be intentional about living a lifestyle of love. You know, the next right spiritual choice that I want to take a look at this morning is this, think before you act. Now, this is a fairly straightforward statement, and, and, and many of you may have actually heard this before, or perhaps you've even, you know, shared it with someone before. But just in case, let, let, let me break this down for us. So, so this phrase, think before you act, is it encompasses much more than just perhaps basic brain processing, you know, kind of like just thinking through the things, right? You know, although I, I think we can all agree that, you know, um, using our brains is, is kind of important. So this phrase, it's typically used to reference the practice of, of thinking through possible outcomes of a situation and then making the best choice about what to do. You know, growing up, I, I remember my parents, my dad specifically, he would, he would ask me every time I made a bad decision, I don't know if this ever happened to you, but he would always 
asked me these things, and, and it was pretty much kind of a rhetorical question, but my mistake was trying to answer it half the time because when I would make a bad, bad decision, and he would look at me, he goes, where, where's your brain? You know, and I'm thinking, right, you know, if I say the, you know, where I think it is, where it's in my head, you know, is that what he wants, or does he want another response, should I not respond, you know, and I would respond, and it would seem it would frustrate him even more, because, well, then why don't you use it, or whatever, you know, but, but see, that's the thing, think before you act. You know, basically, if our desired outcome is excellence, then it's all about the practice of discernment. You know, thinking through the, the decisions we make before we actually move forward with doing it. So in basic terms, it, it's again, th just thinking. Thinking before we act, before I say something, before I do this or do that. You know, listen to verse 10. It says, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. This Verse is saying that, that this, you know, what we believers, Christians, followers of Jesus must do, approve what is excellent. Now this action, I believe, is the result of this discerning love. You know, if we were to look at the Greek and to take the most literal translation here, it would, it would be translated something like this, to test with a sense of approval things that are excellent. The intent here is, is the practice or the ability to, to discern, examine, you know, test things that differ. And I think I should point out here that the difference is not so much the difference between good and evil. And the reason is that God has already set that standard. But the difference, as one scholar puts it, is more between primary and secondary. You know, what is good? What is better? What is best? You know, and, and so I, I look at it this way, and, and you know, I should, I should have perfected this a long time ago because I feel like I've had ample opportunities to practice this. You know, it's kind of like this past year has been kind of this crazy year, and if, I don't know if you go to stores, there are people who may follow physical distancing, may not. People may, you know, they're short, they're irritable because maybe they've been, you know, kind of stuck in their homes a lot. You know, I went, I was, at, I was shopping and, and I was walking by this person and, uh, you know, these aisles are kind of narrow, and, and, and the, this individual was like, uh, you know, so I kind of went by the backside of him, and, you know, my hands were kind of full. And the whole thing was I had this hat and this other thing, and I wanted to see how this hat would fit on my head, so I was walking towards the mirror. But as I walked behind this guy, it, it seemed as if he was backing up also, but, you know, that's all right, you know, and so I tried to kind of, you know, I was actually kind of walking into the clothes, and so part of my things rubbed against his back, you know, and he was like, man, that dude just kind of just snapped, you know. Um, and, you know, my first words were like, oh, you know, oh, sorry, you know, and I kept going, and then, my goodness, these words that came out, I can't even repeat, but he, you know, basically he just confronted me like, what, you know, like, and I was like, oh, you know, now, if I were to look at this, right, you know, I mean, I, I can do what is good or, or best or better or just bad, you know, and, and so good, maybe good is just say, is, is not saying anything at all and just walking away, you know, not escalating the situation, but walking away and perhaps just by doing that, we can de-escalate this whole thing and just go on my merry way. Better could be to accept responsibility and, and maybe just kind of share some words of, of kindness, even though this guy is just all up in my grill and just kind of getting crazy, you know? That would be better. And perhaps best may be, well, I, I really don't know what kind of day this guy had. 
you know, and, and maybe there was something that went on that day that perhaps escalated his, his kind of his, his, his anger just got to the point and got the better of him. And maybe, maybe I just needed to love on him and pour into him. And perhaps that would be best. You know, every situation is going to be different. You know, I'm not one to tell you what you need to be doing or what you got to do or what, what, what is, you know, what you have to do. But I do believe that's where this discernment comes in. That's where when we think before we act, before the words that come out of our mouth that we cannot really take back at that moment. You know, in full transparency, I, on that day, I did not do what was good. I did not do what was better. I didn't even do what was best, you know. My response was like, what? You know, like, and then I was just like, you know, and then, I, you know, I went home. I had to tell my wife, like, epic failure, you know. And so if I were to judge myself or to, 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 to examine myself, man, there was no thinking. And, and that's what Paul, I believe, impresses here. That before we, we act, before we, we say things that we cannot take back, before we do things that we will regret, pause, think, discern, before we act on it. You see, as we mature as Christians, our ability to make these choices they ought to improve as we continue to grow in our faith. And there will be times where there are setbacks. But if we desire what is excellent, if we desire to be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, we ought to think before we act. And then finally, I guess what I see is the, the final right spiritual choice is this, be seekers of Jesus. Now, I don't think this is extremely complicated, but, but let's take a look at, you know, another look at verse 11. In fact, let's start at verse 10 here, and I'll read that again for us. Verse 10 starts out, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. If we want to be pure and blameless, if we want to be filled with the fruit of righteousness, well, then we know, you know, we know where this comes from because Paul just laid it out. That comes through Jesus. So if we want this, Again, I don't think that it's like super complicated or anything like that, but if we want this, then you know what? If we know where it's coming from, then, then strive after that. Be seekers of Jesus. So if we know that, I guess to me, the, the, the bigger part is the how. And so, you know, as we kind of camp out here for the remainder, I, I, I want us to kind of take a look at four practices that, that may help in the how as we strive to be seekers of Jesus. And the first is this word set, okay? You know, and, and what I mean by this is that, you know, if we want to be seekers of Jesus, then it starts with setting our priorities. And I think this goes without saying, but I'll, I'll say it, you know, it means that Jesus needs to be our priority. Man, if we want to grow in our faith, then we need to make our relationship with Jesus a priority. You know, I shared this earlier. We were talking in our family, and I, and I oftentimes, you know, I say stuff, but I don't mean it because there's no, you know, it's not a priority. And I said, well, you know, like, if I wanted to, man, I could get in shape. I always say that, and my, my wife will roll her eyes, my kids will laugh, you know. I said, how, how hard can it be? I could do it, you know, and... And I say that, but even on a good day, it is nowhere near on the radar of being a priority in my life. You know, it's not. I wish it was. 
It, there are times where there's moments of lapses of insanity where I think like, oh yeah, I wouldn't mind getting in shape. And then I realize that, man, that means that I need to stop eating the food that I eat. Okay, well, I don't want to be in shape. You know, I mean, and so it's, it's not the priority anymore. It's gone. It's out, you know. And so does this guy get in shape? No, because it is nowhere near on the top of the list of being a priority. It, it isn't. Do I want to be the ice cream and boba king? Probably, I don't know, but, but that's a priority at times. And so, you know, if we want to grow our faith, then it begins by making it a priority. You know, take a look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. It says this, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Now, I don't think it's saying here, the, it's making reference to whatever we want, we'll get. But it is saying that before we ask, you know, on behalf of, you know, Christ on, in our relationship and growing, you know, we, we first need to be seeking the kingdom of God. You know, so if we want to be seekers of Jesus... We first need to make him a priority. So set our priorities. You know, next in the how is is this word seek. You know, and basically, you know, if we want to be seekers of Jesus, we need to be intentional about seeking his presence through prayer. You know, it's... Hard, I believe, to have a personal relationship with others if we're not willing to communicate with them. And the same is true in our, in our relationship with the Lord. You know, let me read Psalm 119, verse 18. It says, Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. You know, it's impossible to see, to experience the wonderful truths of the Lord if we don't communicate with Him. You know, think about the relationships you guys have that I I think about the ones I have. You know, and, and unless there's this constant communication, there's this gap that develops. You know, for a lot of people, this past year has, has proven that, that, you know, what they thought, they were close, man, I, I wasn't able to communicate with pe- certain people, and, and I, feel, I feel like we're a lifetime apart. You know, so be intentional about seeking His presence through prayer. I heard it said like this, when we pray, we talk to God. When we read the Bible, God talks to us. So when seeking after God, we need both. To talk to God as he hears us and to listen to God speak back. So be intentional again about seeking his presence through prayer. You know, the third practice in this how is this word still. And it comes from the 46th Psalm, verse 10, and I'll read that for us. It says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You know, there may be some that say that this is pretty similar to the previous point. And and yes, it's similar, but there's also a big difference, I think. You know, I mean, where, you know, and where I'm going with this is that if we truly want to be seekers of, of, of Jesus, then we're going to have to be intentional about pausing, setting aside time to be still. You know, most of us, even in this COVID era, have a hard time being still. You know, we're often consumed by doing, we're in the business of of, of busyness. You know, if I'm honest, at the beginning of this pandemic, you know, I I actually thought that I would have 
some amazing times of, of, of quietness, just to be still. You know, when, when they first had that stay-at-home order, I was thinking like, man, you know, I was trying to think positive, and so I thought like, wow, you know, we have a, we have a good-sized backyard, you know, I can go out there and I can just be one with God, I can just be still. And, the, and this was, you know, all these, these grand ideas I had. You know, but I actually found that <clears throat> During this pandemic, the, all of last year, that my days actually got longer, you know, um, that, you know, everybody and their grandmother wanted a, a Zoom meeting, you know, and I, you know, it's kind of like, and, and before, when I would say that, okay, you know, I, I have a meeting at 11, it'll probably go to 12, I'm not going to set another meeting, you know, if it, 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 you know, to maybe about one or two, because maybe that meeting was wherever it was, I got to drive back, and, and now, People are like, oh, so when, 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 you, when are you done with your meeting? Well, I get done with 12. I have another meeting at 1230. And they'll be like, hey, do you think you can jump on for about 20 minutes? Again, you know, without thinking before my, I act, I would like to say, no, I can't jump on. Are you taking drugs? What's the deal? You know, I need moments of, of quietness to be still. But, you know, after thinking, I was like, all right, man, you know, I can give you 15 minutes. And, and so, you know what? In my head, I, you know, I have these sarcastic thoughts like, oh, I can give you 15 minutes. Don't worry. You know, eating is overrated. I don't really need to do any of that. You know, I'll just go from one thing to the next thing to the time I go to bed. You know? and, but, but I found that days got longer. We began to try and squeeze things in. And as that happened, making time to pause, you know, to be still, got exponentially harder and harder and harder. And, and I'll tell you why. It's because when we start, I think, at least for me, when I start squeezing things in, I, 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 by nature, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a doer. I'm a kind of a task kind of oriented individual. And so, you know, I have that checklist. I got to check it off. And as I'm, even as I try to take moments of quietness in the middle of my day, you know, I found myself wandering thinking about the other things that need to get done. I found myself wandering, thinking about, man, if I use this time to check, you know, bullet point three and four off the list, man, I'm that much closer to ending my day. You know, and, and then this practice of being still, you know, gets lost in the sea of busyness. See, you know, we need to be intentional. If, if we want to be seekers of Jesus, we need to be intentional about carving out time, taking a break, pausing, taking a step back, and being still with him. I like what Mother Teresa described, how she described this practice. She said this, we need to find God. And he cannot be found in the noise and restlessness. God is the friend of silence. See how nature, trees, flowers, grass grows in silence. See the stars, the moon, and the sun, how they move in silence. We need silence to be able to touch souls. You see, I, 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 I so appreciate these words because right from the start, we need to find God and he cannot be found in noise and restlessness. And, and, and pretty much that's my day. And so I'm saying that if we want to be seekers of Jesus, be intentional about carving out time to be still. And finally, this, this last practice I want to look at as to the how is this word spend. What I mean by this is that spending time in community with other like-minded believers is, you know, is a vital practice for those who desire to be seekers of Jesus. Take a look at Hebrews chapter, 20, chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. It says this, you know, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, 
not neglecting to meet together as is in the, the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. You know, hearing these words from the book of Hebrews should, should help us understand that seeking after Jesus isn't, you know, kind of an individual pursuit, but also a corporate one as well. The early Christians clearly, you know, they emphasized the importance of, of community and, and fellowship. You know, check out Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says this, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and the prayers. <clears throat> See, spending time with one another in community is important because it allows Christians to encourage one another, you know, in their faith, you know, to, to help them remain strong in their faith, but also to minister to one another, building up the body of Christ. And I believe that's why this this past year has been hard on on so many. Because in in sheltering in, you know, there was this absence of community. We learned a lot of things, at least here in Pro City. We we, we learned, wow, we can do things in so many different ways. We're not locked into just one way. But the one thing that I believe was a struggle was the absence of community of being in the same airspace with like-minded believers because I believe that there's only so much that Zoom can do. But being with one another, encouraging one another is vital to being a seeker of Jesus. But there's, I believe, another aspect to this And is this, you know, spending time in community with other like-minded believers is also vital because of its impact to those around us, the unchurched. You know, Jesus told his disciples in, in John 13, verse 35, by this all people will know that you are my disciples. And what was that? If you have love. For one another. And I say this because I believe that the love Christians have for one another can influence others towards a relationship with Jesus. Because they're looking, I can tell you from a person who came here some 30 some odd years ago as a college student invited to church looking at these people that called themselves Christians. I, you know, I didn't, you know, I, I just knew that Christians were the people that went to the churches that had a cross on it. That, that's all I knew, you know, because I grew up, you know, we, you know, we had attended these Buddhist funerals, and so, you know, we had the, the temple, the church, you know, and, and, but then I came, and I was like, okay, you know, I didn't know what to expect. And I was like, wow, these guys are kind of, they're a little nice, but I don't know, it's something weird, you know, I, I don't know what, I was getting a vibe, but I, I wasn't sure what that was, and, and so I kept coming. And my, my journey to faith, it, it wasn't based on, you know, answering all these questions. You know, like how some people are like, okay, I got to know, I got to know why, or, or, or the, the, tell me the theology of the cross, or, or you know, all of these things. I, I can tell you for me, what it was, was as I observed the Christians, my thought was, Wow. You know, these guys, they love each other, and they love me. And I, and I couldn't put my finger on it. And when I concluded, it was because they loved their God so much that they would reciprocate that love to one another and to me. You know, and, and I wanted that. You know, how, that the fact that they embrace this 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 teaching, this thought, this, this words from the Apostle John that, you know, he loved us. You know, we love because he loved us first. The reason why people love one another, Christians love one another, the reason why they love on me, why they love on you is because, because Christ loved them first. 
So if we desire growth in our lives, if we desire to impact the community that God has placed us in, if we desire to be seekers of Jesus, then we need to be intentional about spending time in community with other like-minded believers. Not only for our sake, not only for their sake, but for the sake of those outside the doors of this church. You know, you see these right spiritual decisions that we just talked about. I want us to understand that, that joy, you know, it is the emotional result of these choices. So as we wrap things up, let me just reshare these words that, you know, I shared earlier from, from Henry Nowen when he said, joy doesn't simply happen to us. We have to choose joy, and we have to keep choosing it every day. You see, because every day, you know, we can, we're faced with decisions to make. So choose a lifestyle of love. You know, every, every day we control our actions. So think before we act. You know, every day we have choices again before us. So may we choose to be seekers of Jesus. Again, joy doesn't simply happen to us. We, we have to choose joy. And we have to keep choosing joy and keep choosing joy. And we have to do it every day. You know, as Dave comes up to lead us in our time of prayer, may we take this time now, this moment to, to be still and to know that He indeed is God. Thank you, Pastor, for sharing God's word with us this morning. Let us take this time to reflect what we have just heard. You know, this is a great time that we can reflect to God. Let's show him our love, our worship, and our praises to Jesus. Pray that God will continue to work in you his spiritual power that may give you the wisdom, the revelation, and the knowledge of knowing him. So let's take this time. Let's close our eyes, bow our heads, and let's bring in a worship prayers to Jesus. Let us pray. Let's use this time to grow close to Jesus. For many of us, you know, we may feel distance from Him. And what's causing us to be distanced from Him is maybe our sins. So let's take this time to bring to the Lord and repent of our sins openly. Ask Jesus for forgiveness. Let us spend time with Jesus right now. Let us pray. You know, as Paul prayed with a joyful heart for others in Christ, we can pray that too. I know there are many that need to know Christ, and we can use this time to lift them up in our prayers. Please pray.
Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for opening the doors of our church and for your words this morning. I pray that after hearing your words this morning, that we will all have a loving heart for you that will bring us knowledge and discernment. Father, help us not to lose heart, but to be believers with sound judgment and sober spirit to devote ourselves to prayers. Help us to live a life that is pure and blameless in your sight. Forgive us when we fall short. Lord, as we go into this week, please reveal yourselves, yourself by your Holy Spirit within our lives. Please create peace and stillness as we seek to be with you and to be your servant. Father, thank you for hearing all of our worship and our praises for you, for you are so worthy of all praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
thank you for worshiping with us today. And as the song just just spoke, that the time is now. Come church, let's arise. We are Christians, and we need to share the love of Jesus. We need to share the joy of Jesus with everyone out there. So as you exit today, you are now entering that mission field. Be an evangelist and just share the love of Jesus with everyone. I, I didn't have time to act, and I have to apologize that um, the church session is actually at 1 o'clock today, not 1.30. I mentioned one thirty. Sorry about that. So it's actually at 1 o'clock. But we thank you for worshiping us today. We thank you for joining us online. And please wait till the ushers excuses you before you leave. Have a great week, everyone.